I have been to New York City many times over the years, and every single time I stop and visit St. Patrick's Cathedral, one of the most well-known churches in the U.S. Today, let's talk a little bit about one of America's grandest cathedrals. St. Patrick's is the largest Gothic Roman Catholic cathedral in the U.S., taking up an entire city block. Its spires stretched 330 feet above street level, and it was once the tallest building in New York, though of course it has since been rather dwarfed by the many skyscrapers surrounding it. Conceived by John Hughes, New York's archbishop at the time, it was initially ridiculed as Hughes's folly given his desire to build the cathedral in a location that was considered too far outside the city. But Hughes insisted on building in that location because he believed it would one day be the heart of the city. Named for St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, due to the rise in Irish immigration, the church has an extensive history. Begun in 1858, construction was halted only two years later due to the Civil War and would not recommence until 1865. The church was almost destroyed by mobs during the Civil War practically before the real work began, and we'd likely have never seen this church completed. But thankfully, authorities sent patrols to protect the city's places of worship from mob destruction, including the unfinished St. Patrick's. The interior of the cathedral has 35 columns and seats about 2,400 people. The gallery organ has 7,885 pipes, there are 21 altars, two of which were designed by the Tiffany Company, and it includes 19 bells. The bells each have names and are named for different saints. St. Patrick, of course, St. Joseph, St. Michael, St. Anne, St. Elizabeth, St. Augustine of Hippo, St. Anthony of Padua, St. Agnes, St. John the Evangelist, St. Bridget, St. Francis Xavier, St. Peter, St. Cecilia, St. Helena, St. Alphonsus Liguori, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Godfrey, and the Blessed Virgin. There is also one final bell that is called Holy Name, donated by the Holy Name Society. There are 2,800 panels of stained glass. The stained glass windows were actually not part of the original church and were added later. This was because there was no electricity at the time and they required the sunlight to help illuminate the massive interior of the cathedral. New stained glass was added in 1954, depicting 12 male and 12 female saints. Many of the windows were made in Chartres, France, renowned for their stained glass ever since the Middle Ages, but other windows were made in Birmingham, England, Boston, and of course, New York. The founder's window depicts Archbishop John Hughes, James Rennick, and Cardinal John McCloskey, each holding architectural renderings of the cathedral. One other little fun fact about the stained glass in St. Patrick's, there is actually a hidden window in the cathedral reportedly behind the organ. It is not meant to be seen. This harkens back to a Gothic cathedral tradition that glory is given to God who sees all things in secret, which we cannot. Every year, the fire department does an inspection of the spires. Five of those firemen were killed on 9-11, and the scribblings from the inspectors remain to this day, even surviving a massive restoration completed in 2015, during which it was decided that the inspection scribbles would be preserved to honor those five fallen firemen. And speaking of 9-11 and fire, in the days immediately following the 9-11 attacks, there were so many prayer candles lit in St. Patrick's that the heat from the flames actually started shattering the glass candle holders. A set of massive bronze doors weighing nine tons open up to the church's main entrance. The doors feature statues of its Catholic immigrant forebears, including St. Isaac Jogues, the first priest of New York, St. Francis Cabrini, mother of the immigrant, and Mother Elizabeth Seton, daughter of New York. Each corner of the church contains inlaid plaques of the four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There is also an inlaid pelican, which is the only bird that can feed its young with her own blood. The church uses the pelican as a symbol of Christ's sacrifice and the Holy Eucharist. There are also other animals that can be found throughout the cathedral, including dolphins, dragons, cats, and mice. The cathedral has its own pieta, which is a depiction of Mary holding her son Christ just after his removal from the cross. This pieta is, of course, not a replica of the famous piece by Michelangelo and is roughly three times bigger. The crypt beneath the church, located right under the high altar, is the final resting place for all the archbishops who have served New York, as well as one single non-clergyman, a Haitian Catholic by the name of Pierre Toussaint, currently being considered for sainthood. There is a little known mystery surrounding the building of the cathedral involving the cornerstone. The cornerstone was laid by Archbishop Hughes on August 15, 1858, a stone hewn by an Irish immigrant and left open for two years so that New Yorkers could leave offerings on it. The stone contained a litany in Latin as well as a news report of the day. 
It was sealed exactly two years later in 1860. Then suddenly it went missing. To this day, no one knows where the cornerstone is. Thank you for listening, and don't forget, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out some of our other work. We've got lots more on the way.